everyone welcome back to my youtube channel or welcome to my youtube channel if you are new i really want to say before we get into this video if you guys have not seen the part one i'll leave a tag up here and a link in the description box below but definitely watch that video first otherwise this video just won't make sense to you um i would have liked to have done a quick catch-up of what happened in part one but unfortunately i feel like this video is going to be quite long so i don't want to waste your time especially for those of you who've already watched part one but yeah watch part one if you have and if you haven't hopefully there will be some like hints of what they were like before but just definitely watch that first if you really want to know the progress the rescue puppies have made from first picking them up to where they are now but on that note, I'm really excited for today's video because these puppies have made so much progress and I really wanted to show you guys the difference it makes within three months of having rescue puppies. Of course, there are still things that the puppies are struggling to do. A lot of other puppies would have progressed a lot faster. They've made a lot of progress in terms of where they've come from, their background and the scared, frightened little puppies they were when they first showed up. Also, this video isn't just me just talking at you. There will be footage alongside everything that I'm saying. So you guys get to see the puppies, see how much they've grown. And there'll be a few flashback videos here and there if necessary. But I hope you guys all enjoy today's video. For me, I think the most important part of this part two is to introduce the fact that we no longer refer to the puppies as fluffy and perky. This was because we described them by their ears and Fluffy had fluffy, floppy ears and Perky had perky ears. We've now named them Koa and Mika. So the reason why we decided to go with these names is Mika actually means little mischief. And basically when we first got Mika, she was the crazy one. She was the one who like wanted to explore. She was a curious one. She was chewing things, stealing things. She was quite mischievous and she has like a very cheeky personality. And then Koa, we named her Koa because Koa actually means little strong warrior. And when we first got Koa, she was the puppy that was really, really scared. She was really frightened. She was hiding constantly. She was insecure. She tried to run behind the fridge when we first picked her up and she was just scared. And she progressed really fast. She is so strong. She's like a little wolf. And we really wanted to find like a dog name that would mean wolf because she literally reminds us of a wolf so often. But we couldn't find a name that we liked. So we just decided to go with Koa because she's so strong. Honestly, her progress from where she was when we first picked her up to now is insane. And we do see her as a strong little warrior. Since the last video, the puppies have moved away from their safe space. When we first got them, we had to establish a safe space for them, a place that they could go to where they'll feel comfort and feel safe. And they decided to choose those safe spaces on their own and they would hide in that little bottom part of the stairs and they would cuddle up together, heads pressed against each other and that was their safe space. It was literally only a few weeks after I filmed that video that they actually started to move away from their safe space because we constantly would go towards them, give them attention, give them love, put our heads on the floor to get them to come to us because they were so scared and frightened. They started to realise when we walked past them and didn't like acknowledge them or we went into a different room after playing with them, they would be like, wait, where did they go? Like, why, why are they leaving? And they would have that curiosity that would spark them to move out of their safe space. And they gradually would do that over a few days. They'd move out of their safe space, see where we were going. But we had the issue that they wouldn't go past the threshold of the room. So whenever they walk up to the line of a room and where there's like a little door frame and stuff, they wouldn't go past it. Um, which is really sweet but again their curiosity sparked them to eventually take that step over we'd lure them out with cheese with snacks or we'd just lie on the floor and be like puppies puppies and encourage them to cross that threshold and obviously over time they would do that and eventually they would come to us for affection when you normally go to someone's house and they have dogs the dogs jump up at you they don't know who you are they don't care who you are but they're like oh my god human and they get really excited they want the attention straight away but with these puppies we had to go to them quite frequently and when we started to pull away and become more independent and go around to our separate rooms and they would follow us then they start to come and jump up at us and think oh i want some love and that was really important for us that they were making the first move koa was the one that took longer she was the one who was most scared initially but because mika was so confident and so mischievous koa would start to realize that when she was making these big steps with us that she wasn't getting hurt the outcome was okay and she could see that the consequences were fine so koa then started to you know warm up to us a bit and think well my sister's okay so i'm okay and i think that was really a significant point to make actually is the fact that we had two of them which meant that they were reliant on each other in positive and negative ways. So whenever Mika would do something or take a big step, Ko would feel okay to do so and vice versa. But again, if one of them was scared, the other one would then be scared because they'd think, oh, my sister's scared, so I should be scared. 
even if they weren't initially. Poa was very sweet though, even though she was quite nervous at the start of show affection, she would cry if all of us weren't together. So because we have like a front room and then a living room, um, whenever we were separate in those separate rooms, Koa would go in between the rooms and cry and try and herd us together. And that's why we felt like she was very wolf-like. She wanted like the whole group to be together. Um, so even though she'd be too nervous to show affection, she'd cry when we weren't all together, which was just really, really sweet. At bedtime is when they showed the most confidence. I don't know whether it was because my mum was lying on the floor, because that was something we noticed whenever you lied on the floor and got to their level, they would come to you and they'd be really excited to see you, sniff your hair whatever it may be whenever my mom was like getting ready for bed they get really really excited and they'd start play fighting that was another really important for us because they started to become more like puppies they were less frightened and you know they didn't disappear into themselves they had the confidence to play they had the confidence to fight each other and they weren't scared that we tell them off or shout at them or hurt them and that was just amazing to see them actually playing. I also want to talk to you guys a bit about their first experiences with new things and how they reacted to those new experiences because obviously it took them a very long time to get used to this house, to get used to us, but then we'd throw new things at them and how they reacted and how they took them. So their first bath experience, they reverted back to those little rescue puppies, as you could probably tell from the photos. They were scared, they were looking up at us and it was horrible to see, but as soon as they came out of the bath, they were running around, they were excited, they were shaking their fur and they absolutely loved the bath afterwards and they snapped back really quick. So obviously putting them in the bath, they were thinking, what are they doing to us? But as soon as they came out and realized that they were safe and they were okay, they were over the moon. And more recently we've bathed them again and again, they were in the bath, they reverted back to their old little rescue puppy selves. But as soon as they came out, they were excited and running around and oh my gosh, we literally could not calm them down. There were also new things like their first time in the snow. So the first time in the snow, they were so excited by it. They would run around and pad their little paws. They absolutely loved the snow and that wasn't something that worried them, which I thought it would have been just because they were so worried about the wind. Whenever like the door would swing slightly, they would be absolutely scared. I remember in the first part of this video, I actually said about how when the puppies would like go outside and stuff, they'd be absolutely fine. But one day the French door like swung shut because of the wind and we couldn't get the puppies to go back out again and they went back to their safe space. But at this point they were playing out in the snow, they were absolutely fine with the snow, fine with the wind, everything was okay with all this weather, the new experience of snow. We'd give them new toys so they'd smell different and we didn't think they'd know what to do with them but straight away they were playing with their little ducks with their little rope toy and let's just say every single toy they've had they've completely ruined those ducks now are gone the puppies teddies that i actually got in the first part of this video they're also completely demolished um in the bin little scraggly fabric parts. It was actually quite tragic because I thought they'd walk around with little teddies in their mouth, but they just tore them apart because obviously they're teething um, and they're doing that with all of their toys. They're playing with them. They're fighting over toys. Um, and again, that's really progressive for rescue puppies, the fact that they're playing. Whenever my mum went to the shops, I'd also puppy sit them. So I remember in the part one, I was also saying that they had a very special bond with my mum. And even though they obviously still do, they my mum is their mum. That's how I see it. I feel like I'm like the fun aunt. I'm trying to play with them, run around with them. I actually went through the cat flap to show them that that's what dogs do. Um, I don't know how I didn't get stuck in there and I probably look like a right idiot to any neighbours who just saw half of my body outside the cat flap and half of my body in. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, they started to bond with me a lot more. So whenever I puppy sit with them, they'd want to play. They'd like pull me to go outside in the garden with them. And then whenever I was outside with them, they'd jump up and be so, so ecstatic. They'd be so happy and they loved playing with me. They'd tip upside down, let me rub their belly. And definitely from my mum going and me having one-on-one -on -one time with the puppies, definitely helped us establish that relationship as well. So I'm, I feel like sometimes I feel like their second mum, when my mum's not around, I'm the one giving them the treats. I'm the one shouting at them if they do anything wrong and I'm the one playing with them just like all the things that my mum does. Obviously over time we've started to establish their personalities so I really wanted to give you guys an update on their personalities. So we soon started to realise that Koa was the wild one. Koa is crazy. You ready? You ready? <laughs> we ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> She digs the bed sheets frantically, she digs in the back garden, she grates holes, she tries to eat mouses, 
she's literally crazy um she's so funny though she's so so sweet i remember when we first got her she had one ear up and one ear down and we felt like she looked like she was in a constant state of confusion and as she's gotten older she um actually has pointy ears the majority of the time her ears point up and whenever she's really happy or she wants to play or she's having fun she'll put her ears down and oh it's so so sweet so she is a sweetheart <laughs> but oh my gosh she bites but in a, like in a sweet way like she's so playful like you rub her belly and she'll try and bite you if you pull her first try and bite you she's like so playful <laughs> Mika is an absolute sweetheart. She's such an angel. Whenever Koa does anything wrong, Mika will jump in and stop her. So because every time Koa digs up my mum's duvet, my mum always shouts at Koa. So I was actually in charge of looking after puppies one evening and Koa was digging up the duvet and I hadn't said anything yet. But because Mika remembers, my mum always tells Koa off. Mika ran over to Koa and was biting her to stop her from pulling up the duvet and she does this all the time. <laughs> Go <laughs> Go stop being silly. <laughs> and she's such an angel and she'll come and sit on your lap. She'll give you kisses. Mika's also very poury, so she'll pour your face. I've actually had multiple cuts. She's so poury, but she like in it unintentionally just claws your face. Um, but she's so poury, and when she gets excited, she pats on the floor. Hey, you rude. In terms of training, this is what we've done so far. The puppies no longer poo when we are in the house. They always poo when we outside. And whenever we open the French doors, the puppies know that's their playtime and they go out into the back garden. And then they run around the back and they come through, through the cat flap. But they won't go through the cat flap on their own. So obviously it's the swinging door and that's it, like scares them because they can hear the bang as it hits. They're worried it's gonna hit them on the head. So basically they run around the back and if we're there, then we open the cat flap for them. If we're not there, then the dogs bark to let us know that they want to come in. We hold the cat flap open and the puppies come running in and they're fine. Obviously that was something they had to get used to as well because they were like, I don't want to go through this hole. It looks like a tight space. But now they're coming through the cat flap. We're just trying to get them to come in on their own accord, which is why I crawled through the cat flap to show them that I was safe and I was on the other side. But it was actually really sad because when I crawled through the cat flap to show them, Mika kept tilting her head because she didn't understand where I'd gone and why I'd done that and if I was okay and because obviously she's used to us holding open for them she went to come to me like to make sure I was all right but because the cat flap was shut she was like touching her nose with it but she didn't want to move it because that sensation scared her so she kind of just kept looking at me and tilting her head um which is something else that she does she just tilts her head all the time um whenever she's confused <laughs> if she hears new noises she's just like my mum also started putting harnesses on them every morning um, because basically when we put leads on them we want to attach it to a harness when they go on dog walks so we wanted to get them used to the harness to make sure they weren't scared. So my mum got into the routine of putting a harness on them every single morning and Koa actually really liked having a harness put on and then we wanted to make the next step of putting a lead and harness on them. They were really scared of their leads because they associated the leads with when they arrived. When they arrived, we put the slip leads on them. So they kind of have that association that the slip lead is like Romania, that van and everything else that they've been through. We expected way too much of them. And I remember we took them out the front, had the slip leads on, had the harness on and they were shaking. They were so, so scared. And we were thinking, yeah, we're going to have to slow it down a lot. Like just because they're okay with the harnesses, just because they're completely fine in the house, it doesn't mean they're okay to go outside yet. So what we've started to do is put a harness and a lead on them, let them kind of like walk around with the lead, get used to the lead itself. And they've slowly started to become okay with it. I remember when they first had the lead, they would run away from it because they didn't know why the lead was following them. And Mika like cowered in a corner for ages and wet herself and it was horrible. Um, but what we've started to do is put it on them regularly like we did with the harness and gradually, hopefully they stop being scared. Right now, we're at the point where they can go on like a walk with us holding the lead. So once we started to put the lead and harness on and they got used to the lead dragging behind them, 
mum then started to lure them out the front door with cheese and get them past that threshold because obviously it was a new threshold for them so we started to lure them out and they started to go out the front on their own and mum would let them play out the front but she started to realize that they were so curious they were going like to the end of the street and things like that and that obviously wasn't very safe because of cars they could get scared quickly ran so my mum said yeah if they are going to be let out i have to have that lead and harness on them so that's when we started taking them out the front with the lead and harness so no longer just indoors and getting used to it they went out the front past the threshold um we pick Koa up put her out the front and she walks like on a dog walk um mum holds a lead she walks ahead because initially they weren't okay with us holding the leads unless they were in control um so mum started to get the hang of Koa letting Koa lead but then being like come on let's turn around now and Koa's slowly getting used to that Mika won't come out unless we're not holding her lead so mum will pick her up and put her out the front but because Mika whenever she gets picked up she wets herself because she gets scared um we basically walk out I will walk out with my mum and my mum will be holding her on the lead we'll be walking out the front and Mika will follow behind and then eventually I could pick Mika's lead up once she's out the front and we'll go on the walk so my mum's been doing that every morning and I've been helping her every evenings and they're, they're getting used to it I don't know if you guys can tell from the videos but sometimes they're actually walking like a normal dog walk um we're just so excited to be able to take them on walks soon because they keep getting agitated because they're puppies and they want the exercise but they just won't go on a walk so we're getting so close to taking them out on dog walks we're really excited about that with the cats i remember the cats were an issue the first time i did the video um they basically herded all the cats into my bedroom the cats were in my bedroom for ages i've got so many videos but i'll just insert a few here of just all three cats being in my bedroom um they just didn't like being downstairs with the dogs gradually they've become a lot more comfortable um the dogs still try and play mostly with shadow the our black cat um, they love trying to play with her and Shadow will wind them up. Like if you saw the video of them on the dog walk, whilst the dogs were like tied up obviously on these leads and feeling sorry for themselves, Shadow would like run around and like show off that she was free and oh my gosh, she winds them up all the time. So their relationship's so funny and so sweet. She'll sleep in their bed, like she doesn't give anything. She does not care, um, which is really funny. Toffee's just not phased and Jacob was the one that was you know the issue of the first time I did this video basically he was absolutely terrified his tail would blow up like a squirrel um and finally they're okay now obviously he cries whenever the dogs go near him but he walks past them now he can go downstairs and we've started to teach the puppies not to chase because whenever the cats run the dogs go but then stop sometimes before we even have to say no because they remember every time they go to run we always tell them off so they're starting to get the hang of that as well our next step is getting the puppies upstairs we tried getting them upstairs in a video and mika went back to her curious mischievous self she was walking around looking up on the bed and she was really excited to be there are you wagging your tail <laughs> what are you doing on a bed what are you doing on a bed what a big Oh, did she get up here by herself? She just randomly jumped up. I didn't. Oh, so clever. You are, fan... you are fantastic. I'm so proud of you. And Koa went back to her shy, terrified, rusky puppy, trampling self. Um, so that was really hard for us to see because we hadn't seen her like that for so long because she is the wild, crazy one. As of now, we're trying to get them through the cat flap. We're trying to keep doing our morning walks in the morning and evening and gradually take them on a long walk. And eventually we'll be able to take them upstairs. But I think the upstairs thing is kind of like the last thing on our minds. As long as they can come in and out on the cat flap on their own and we can start taking them for daily walks, I think the stairs will be, you know, the final part of the puppies understanding the whole house understanding their routine understanding their home i think it's very obvious to us that koa is an outdoor dog and mika is an indoor dog we have had ups and downs obviously this just sounds very linear but it's actually not 
Um, for example, sometimes Mika doesn't like going outside because we shut the French doors so they go round through the cat flap. Mika doesn't like the idea of us shutting her out, but obviously we have to because she'll run mud through the living room, she'll run mud through the house, so we want them to get used to going around through the cat flap. Ko is fine with this, Ko loves being outside. On the walks, she's the more confident one, she loves exploring. When my mum let her out on her own, she couldn't find Koa and Koa was like at the next door neighbour's house sniffing flowers. She loves being outside. Mika thrives inside, I personally think. Um, for example, when we took her upstairs, she was really excited looking around at everything that was inside, but Koa was shaking. So yeah, that brings me to the end of today's video. Today was a very long, catchy up type video, but I hope you guys all enjoyed seeing all the footage of the puppies and all the progress they've made. Thank you for anyone who's done a follow up and it will probably be the final part. I may catch people up in a vlog or something like that. But honestly, there's not much to add to them. Their personalities are thriving. They're completely fine. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. Any support is much appreciated. And I'll see you guys all very, very soon. Oh, oh, oh.